continuing chapter 14, Dynasty 20. I had guarded well my boundary up to Zahi, Philistia. There stood an ambush over against him, the chief leaders, the governors, the noble marinas, and the chief people of the warriors. A defense was built on the water like a strong wall of ships of war, of merchantmen, of boats and skiffs. They were manned from the forepart, forepart to the hind part with the bravest warriors who bore their arms and with the best lifeguards of the land of Egypt. They were like roaring lions on the mountain. The knights were the swiftest in the race and the most distinguished horsemen of a skillful hand. The horses quivered in all their limbs ready to trample the nations under the hooves. I was like the war god Mentu, the strong. I held my ground before them. They beheld in the battle of my hands, King Ra Masu the third. I went far forward in the van, conscious of my might, strong of arm, protecting my soldiers in the day of battle. They who had reached the boundary of my country were never more reaped, harvest. Their soul and their spirit passed away forever. They who had assembled themselves over against the others on the great sea, a mighty firebrand lightened before them in front of the mouths of the river. A wall of iron shut them in upon the lake. They were driven away, dashed to the ground, hewn down on the bank of the water. They were slain by hundreds of heaps of corpses. The end was a new beginning. Their ships and all their possessions lay strewn in the mirror of the water. Thus have I taken from the nations the desire to direct their thoughts against Egypt. They exalt my name in their country. Yea, their heart is on fire for me. As long as I shall sit on the throne of Horinku, a trembling cease, the inhabitants of the northern regions in their body because of the Kurosatha and the Sakar, because they plundered their land, if they went out to meet them, their spirit failed. Some were brave people by land, others on the sea. Those who came by way of the land, Yemen Ra pursued them and annihilated them. Those who entered into the mouths of the Nile were caught like birds and nets. They were made prisoners. It came to pass that the people of the northern regions who reside in their islands and on their coasts shuddered in their bodies. They entered into the lakes and the mouths of the Nile. Their noses snuffed the wind. Their desire was to breathe the soft air. The king broke forth like a whirlwind upon them to fight them in the battlefield like all his heroes. Their spirit was annihilated where they stood. Their soul was taken from them. A stronger than they came upon them. In the 11th year of Vramp Simitas, I think I said that, what that, how you really say that name in another program, but threatened the safety of the country from the West. Maxius, attacked Egypt under the leadership of the king, Mashashal, Asala, a son of Kapur, in great force. In order to obtain possession of the rich districts on the banks of the canopic mouth of the Nile, a great battle was fought about the month of Mesori in the same year and the enemy were utterly defeated. The list of the killed was very considerable and not less was the number of the prisoners and the number of the spoil of which a list here is subjoined. The total number of hands cut off, 2,175. The prisoners of war of Pharaoh belonging to the nation of Maxius, commander in chief, one. Commanders, five. Maxius, men, 1,205. Youths, 152. Boys, 131, total 1,494, their wives, 372, girls, 
65. Maidservants, 151. Total, 558. Notice how they had a culture where all the females of age were married off. Total number of prisoners of war of Pharaoh without distinction, heads. 2052, you know, ex except the uh, lower class, I guess, which were like, more like the concubines, which we would think, because if they weren't wives, um, Axios, who the king killed on the spot, 2135. And of course, I'm against slave rape in any circumstance. Other things to spoil, over 119 cattle, 119 and some unknown number. Uh, swords, five cubits long, 115. Swords, three cubits long, 124. Well, three cubits is a heck of a lot more useful than five cubits. Five cubits kind of seems ceremonial, right? Because why, why do you need a sword as big as a person? You know, well, I mean, as long as a person, right? Uh, bows, 603. Chariots of war, 93. Quivers, 2310. Spears, 92. Horses and donkeys of the Maxis, 183. We know that the king also conquered the Negroes, Nahasu. And Therau'e and the Amara'e. And that besides Purusatha, the two Irsha of the seas were numbered among his enemies, and that the Kar, Phoenicians, and the Amorites received a severe chastisement from him, a special value are the effigies of the conquered kings, which Ra Basu the third caused to be sculptured in his palace by the side of the temple of Yemen at Medinet Habu. One, the king of the miserable land of Kush, uh, Ethiopia, two to three, destroyed. Four, the king of the Labu, Libyan. Five, the king of Tursus, the land of the Negroes. Six, the king of Masha Uasha, Maxias. Seven, the king of Taraua, land of the Negroes. Eight, the miserable king of Keta, Hathites, as a living prisoner. Nine, the miserable king of the Amori, the Amorites. Ten, the leader of the hostile bands of the Zakari, Zaigrita. Eleven, the people of the Sea of Shardana, Partani. Twelve, the leader of the hostile bands of the Shasu, Edomites. 13, the people of the sea to Irsha, Taurus. 14, the leader of the hostile bands of the Pu, Rosatha, are Prasodita. Brahmasu III conducted a campaign of vengeance against several of the above named nations. The names of the conquered cities and countries cover one side of the pylon of the temple at Medinet Hatu. One, Ma, and unknown rest of it. Uh, two, Paro, unknown rest of it. Three, Puther, unknown rest of it, but Patara in Lycia is what he's also known as. Four, Zizi, the rest of it's unknown. Five, Tharshka, Taras in Sicilia, six Kharab, seven Salamaski, 
Salamis in Cyprus. Eight, Cathian. CTM in Cyprus. Nine, uh, MR. Marion in Cyprus. 10, Sally, Sully in Cyprus. 11, Ethal, Edalium in Cyprus. 12, Makboas, Akamas in Cyprus. 13, Tarshabi. 14, Bizarre. 15, Ase. 16, Aman, Mons Amanas. 17, Elekan. 18, Picaz. 19, um, just like there's a gap in the middle of 15, uh, there's a gap in the beginning. Uba'e. 20, Karena or Kalena. I'd have to see the glyphs. There may not be R or L. It could be very distinct which one it is, right? Uh, Karania in Cyprus. 21, Kir. The rest of it's not there, but Kuriam in Cyprus. 22, Abu Roth. 23, Kabur or Sibira in Sicilia. 24, Emal, Miley in Sicilia. 25, U something, Lou. Ale in Sicilia. 26, Kushpita. Kasaiponis in Sicilia, 27, Canu, Kaunus in Caria, 27, La, something, Aras, also known as Larissa, 29, Arapeka, 30, Shabe, 31, Zaur, Zor, Tyrus in Sicilia, 32, Kilosenen, Kalasa in Phrygia. Malnus, Malus in Sicilia. Samae, Saime in Akarian Island. Thesaka, Me, something Are. 37 is a beer or a Bill, Athena, Adana, and Cecilia, Carchemish, Caracassium, and Cecilia. Even as some of the parallel names receive rectification hereafter, yet still the fact remains certain that in this list, places on the coasts and islands of Asia Minor were intended by the Egyptians. In the case before us, we may assume as certain that the places enumerated were the seats of Carian peoples in Asia Minor and at the neighboring islands, but especially of Sicilia and Cyprus, the presence and buildings for which the entities were indebted for the grateful son, Ra Masu III, are all set forth in details of the great Horus Papyrus. The Ramesia are buildings raised for the glorification of Ramsin. Itis, I found in various parts of the country. Thebes possesses the lion's share, and next to it, Heliopolis and Memphis. With regard to other places, new temples of Ramasu the third are named in a summary in their succession from south to north. Uh, Ramesium, or Ramesium, right? Would that be the Greek pronunciation? And Thenis, in honor of the Egyptian Mars and Hora. Uh, Ramesium in Abydos for the entity Yasir, you know, Yasir being Osiris. A Ramesium in Coptus, a Ramesium in Apu, two Ramesia in Lycopolis, two Ramesia in Hermopolis, a Ramesium in the temple town of Sutx in the city of Pa Ramasu Mary Yemen. A temple of Yemen at Medinet Habu on 
Nabank, the holy mountain of the dead, still remains the most beautiful and remarkable monument of this king. The reliefs which cover the interior and exterior walls represent in a lifelike and artistic style various detached episodes in his campaigns, even to an occasional lion hunt. The appended inscriptions give an instructive explanation of the scene. Others give an insight to the order of the feast as then observed, inclusive of the sacrifices and into the fixed holidays of the old Egyptian calendar, according to the latest arrangement. We find here a heavenly calendar expressed distinguished from the earthly one. Among the general holidays were the 29th, 30th, 1st, 2nd, 4th, 6th, 8th, and 15th days of each month. The days are set forth in this order. According to the Egyptian assumption that on the 29th day is that on which the conjunction of the sun and moon takes place and on which the world was created. And just like we have Satuk's program for Set, um, Krahote, we have a Thoth one too. Well, I think we have a couple of each on the channel, but um, Trahote, the rising of the Sothis star, Sirius, a sacrifice for Yemen. On the 17th, the eve of the Uwaga feast. On the 18th, the Uwaga feast. The 19th, the feast of Trahote. The 22nd, the feast of the great manifestation of Yasir. The 17th of Pa'afe, the eve of the Yemen fest of Hapi, the 19th through 23rd, the first five days of the Yemen feast of Hapi, the 12th of Athir, the last day of the festival of Hapi, the 17th special feast after the festival of Hapi, the first of Koyak feast of Hatar, the 20th, Feast of the Sacrifice, 21st, the opening of the tomb of Yisr. The 22nd, the Feast of the Hoeing of the Earth. Um, I think that's a more dramatic thing in the North. Um, I mean, as far as the, uh, as far as that being one of the holidays that we kind of know about, like the, you know, for some Imbolc uh, in other areas that would have been Astara, but um, you know, uh, start of the spring quarter and the other uh, and the spring equinox. Um, but it really varied where. Um, the 23rd of Koyak, uh, the preparation of the sacrificial altar in the tomb of Yesir. The 24th, the ex exhibition of the corpse of Sekar as Yesir in the midst of the sacrifice. The 25th, the feast of the morning female entity. You know, Yest, Sa, you know, Isis, probably. The 26th, the feast Sakar, yes, you're again. The 27th, the feast of the father of the palms. The 28th, the feast of the procession of the obelisk. The 30th, the feast of the setting up of the image of Dind. Is it did or drugged, you know, the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, that pillar thing. The feasts which follow these are unfortunately obliterated. To the special feast days must be added the 26th of Akans in commemoration of the king's ascension to the throne on the Eastern side of Thebes. Ramasu the third, like the foundation stone of an oracle giving temple of the entity Kansu, the son of Yemen and the female entity Mut. He likewise found a new Ramasum, which adjoined the great forecourt of the temple of Yemen at Thebes. It is still well preserved, but it's almost worthless from an artistic point of view. An inscription on this eastern side records as a fact that Ramasu the third in the 16th year of his reign, the in the month of Paini, appointed special sacrifices for his entity. The altar 
dedicated to this purpose was an artistic work of silver. In foreign countries, also temples were built according to the Harris Papyrus. The king erected a Ramesseum to Yemen and the city of Canaan. The statue of the entity was set up in its Holy of Holies. The obligation was laid on the tribes of the Ruthen to provide this temple with all the necessities. That Ramesu III did not enjoy his throne without cares and alarms is proved by a harem conspiracy, which aimed at his overthrow. It was discovered, and the king immediately summoned a court of justice and himself named the judges who were to try and sentence the guilty. The names of the judges and judgments which were delivered have been handed down to us, nearly complete in the judicial papyri. of Turin, which has been translated by M. Le Padja Bernal, page two, one. And the commission was given to the treasurer, Mentu Yim Taue, the treasurer, Paif Roue, two. The fan bearer, Karo, the counselor, Apa Basat, the counselor, Kedenden, the counselor, Baal Mahar. Three, the counselor, Pa'aru Sunu, the counselor, Jahotarek Nefer, the royal interpreter, Pen Renu, the scribe, Ma'e, the scribe, Pragimheb of the chancery, the color bearer, Hora of the garrison, to this effect. Five, regarding the speeches which the people have uttered and which are unknown, ye shall institute an inquiry about them. Six, they shall be brought to a trial to see if they deserve death. Then they shall put themselves to death with their own hand. Ratmasu the third warrants the judges to conduct the affair conscientiously, to conduct the affair conscientiously and concludes with these words. Page three, if all that has happened was such that it was actually done by them, let their doing be upon their own heads. I am the guardian and protector forever and bearer of the royal insignia of justice in presence of the king as a god, Yemen Ra, and in the presence of the prince of eternity, Yesir. Uh, Yemen Ra, five, Bearer of four, I am three, two, let her doing be uh, one, if all that has happened. Um, okay, because I, I think I'm maybe you should give the numbers for these. Um, this is followed by a second and longer section of the trial. Page four, uh, each paragraph, I guess, is a number, so 15 paragraphs. Here. Um, one. These are the persons who were brought up on account of their great crimes before the judgment seat to be judged by the treasurer, Mento Yem Taue, by the treasurer, Paif Raue, by the fan bearer, Karo, by the counselor, Pa Besat, by the scribe, Ma'e, of the chancery, and by the standard bearer, Hora, and who were judged and found guilty and whom, to whom punishment was awarded that their offense might be expiated. Yeah, when you're gonna execute, it's not that you blame the person forever, it's that they've paid for the crimes. The chief culprit, uh, the chief culprit, Becca Common. He was a house steward. He was brought up because of actual participation in the doings of the wife De and the women of the harem. He had conspired with them and had carried abroad their commission given by word of mouth to their mothers and sisters there to stir up the people and to assemble the malcontents and to commit a crime against their Lord. They set him before the elders of the judgment seat. They judged his offense and found him guilty of having done so. And he was fully convicted of his crime. The judges awarded him his punishment. Three. Three. The chief culprit, Mestu Su. Ra. He was a counselor. 
He was brought up because of his actual participation in the doings of Becca Common, the house steward. He had conspired with the women to stir up the malcontents to commit a crime against their Lord. They set him before the elders of the judgment seat. They judged his offense. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. Four, the chief culprit, Panauk. He was the royal secretary of the harem. Four, the service of the women's house. He was brought up on account of his actual participation in the conspiracy of Becca Common and Mestu Su Ra to commit a crime against their Lord. They set him before the elders on of the judgment seat. They judged his offense. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. The chief culprit, Pen Tu Au'u, he was the royal secretary of the harem for the service of the women's house. He was brought up on account of his actual participation in the conspiracy of Becca Common and Mestu Su Ra and the other chief culprit who was the overseer of the harem of the women in the women's house to increase the number of the malcontents who had conspired to commit a crime against their Lord. They set him before the elders of the judgment seat. They judged his offense. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. The chief culprit, Pa Meth Yimtu Yemen. He was a land surveyor for the service of the women's house. He was brought up because he had listened to the speeches in which the conspirators and the women of the women's house had indulged in without giving information of them. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat. They judged his offense and found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. So six, the chief culprit, Pa Nef Emtu Yemen. Five, the chief culprit, Pen Tu Au. Four, the chief culprit, Pendo, ok, um, I, I, th I think I left out the numbers. Uh, seven, the chief, culp uh, the chief culprit, Carpusa. He was a land surveyor for the service of the women's house. He was brought up on account of the talk which they had heard, but had kept silence. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat, and they judged his offense and found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. Eight, the chief culprit, Ka M Apt. He was a land surveyor for the service of the women's house. He was brought up on account of the talk which he had heard but had kept silence. He was sent before the elders of the judgment seat. And they judged his offense and found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. Nine, the chief culprit, Ka Ma Manro. He was a land surveyor for the service of the women's house. He was brought up because of the talk which he had heard but had kept silence. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat, and they judged his offense and found him guilty and aborted him his punishment. 10. The chief culprit, Sete Yimpa Trahote. He was a land surveyor for the service of the women's house. He was brought up on account of the talk which he had heard, but had kept silence. He was set up before the elders of the judgment seat, and they judged his offense and found him guilty and aborted him punishment. 11. The chief culprit, the chief culprit Sete Yimpa Yimpa he was a land surveyor for the service of the women's house. He was brought up on account of the talk which he had heard, but have kept silence. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat, and they judged his offense and found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. 12. The chief culprit, Uwa Rumaat, he was a counselor. He was brought up because he had heard, been an ear witness of the communications of the overseer of the house and held his tongue and kept silence without giving any information thereof. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat, and they found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. 13. The chief culprit, Ak Hepset, he was the accomplice of Becca Common. He was brought because he had been an ear witness of the communications of Becca Common and had been as confident without having reported it. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. 14. The chief culprit, Pa Loka, he was a counselor and scribe of the treasury. He was brought up an account of his actual participation with Becca Common. He had also heard communications without having made report of them. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. 15, the chief culprit of the Libyan Inini. He was a counselor. He was brought up because of his actual participation with Becca Common. He had listened to his communications without having made report of them. He was set before the elders of the judgment seat. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. And page five, one. The wives of the people of the gate of the women's house who had joined the conspirators were brought before the elders of the judgment seat. They found them guilty and awarded them their punishment. Six women. Two, the chief culprit, 
Pakati, a son of Lemma. He was a treasurer. He was brought up on account of his actual participation with the chief accused, Pen Haban. He had conspired with him to assemble the malcontents to commit a crime against their lord. He was brought before the elders of the judgment seat. They found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. Three, the chief culprit, Ban M Us, was a captain of the foreign legion of the Kushi. He was brought up on account of a message which his sister, who was in the service of the women's house, had sent to him to stir up the people who were malcontent, saying, come accomplish the crime against thy Lord. He was set before Kedan Den, Bal Mahar, Pa'aru Sunu, and Drahota Raknafer. They judged him and found him guilty and awarded him his punishment. Or persons who were brought up on account of their crime and on account of their actual participation with Becca Common, namely Pa'as, Pen Ta'ur, they were sent before the elders of the judgment seat to be tried. They found them guilty, laid them down by their arms uh, by force at the judgment seat, and they died by their own hand with their expiation being completed. Five, the chief accused Pa'as, he was a captain of the soldiers. The chief accused Mes Sue, he was a scribe at the treasury. The chief accused Common, he was an overseer. The chief accused Ere, he was a priest of the female entity, Sukst. You know, uh, Saket, the, the lioness. Um, the chief accused Nebet Athau. He was a counselor. The chief accused Shat Setem. He was a scribe of the treasury, making together six. Six. These are the persons who were brought up on account of their crime to the judgment seat before Kedenden, Bal Mahar, Pa. Aru Sunu, Jahata Raknefer, and Mara Usa Yemen. They judged them for their crime. They found them guilty. They laid them down before the tribunal. They died before their, by their own hand. Seven, Pentaur, so is called the second of this name. He was brought up because of his actual participation with the, his mother's, when they hatched conspiracy with the women's house. And because of the crime, which was to have been committed against their Lord, he was set before the counselors to be judged. They found him guilty. They laid him down where he stood. He died by his own hand. Eight. The chief accused Han Uten Yemen. He was a counselor. He was brought up because of the crime of the women's house. He had been an ear witness in the midst of them without having given information. They set him before the counselors to judge him. They found him guilty. They laid him down where he stood. He died by his own hand. Nine, the chief accused Yemen Ka'u. He was a don for the service of the women's house. He was brought up because of the crime of the women of the women's house. He had been an ear witness among them without having given information. They set him before the counselors to be judged. They found him guilty. They laid him down where he stood. He died by his own hand. And Le Hajrenouf observes the expression Aouf Mutnef Ta'eset is a very remarkable one. The pronoun Ta'esef has a reflexive force and emph emphatically marks the agent of the deed. As Upper Ta'esef signifies self existent, so Mut Ta'esef means dying by one's hand. And so. 10 of 5, and um, the rest of the chapter, and probably two programs, will follow. Sharma, peace be upon you.